Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about year-end planning for QuickBooks users. And a lot of this probably could apply to other people too, even those who don't use QuickBooks. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now, 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Okay, so here we are in a sample company file. And it's year end. Hopefully it's September like it is now when I'm recording this at the latest October. And it's time to take a look at the books. It's time to take a look at what's in the books. We've spent all year putting information in, entering transactions, reconciling bank and credit card statements. And hopefully by now we've assured ourselves that the information in here is complete and accurate and reliable so that we can run some reports knowing that we can rely on the information they produce in order to do the very analysis we're about to do. The first thing I want to have you do is come over here to reports, go to company financial, and I want you to run a profit and loss previous year comparison. This is going to give you some very telling information, especially, you know, year in and year out, most things should be about in line. I mean, if you know that sales went up, then you know some of the direct expenses should have gone up. So you're looking for relationships that you would expect to see based on what you know about how your business has performed so far this year. Numbers by themselves are useless, but when you have something to compare them to, then they become extremely meaningful. So we want to look at these numbers in relation to what our expectations should be. If we know we did worse this year, if we know this year generally wasn't as good as last year, then we would expect to see a trend based on that when we compare last year to this year. So you want to go through a report like this line by line. Look at the percent change especially. The dollar change doesn't really matter as much, but the percent change is what's really important to focus on and see if the trends, if the relationships make sense. If I know that income went up, then I should see my gross profit going up. And I want to, I expect my cost of goods sold to go up as well, but I want to know by how much. And looking at this sample company file, I can see very clearly and quickly that uh, it, it, it looks very good. Income went up by a lot, almost 1,500%. Cost of goods sold went up by only 270%, so my gross profit went up by 1,800%. So that's good. That's really good. That means we've done really well so far this year. And so this is the first report you want to go through, and you want to go through it line by line and look at every single line item and say, why did fuel go down so much? Why are we spending less money this year on fuel compared with last year? Is it, is it because we've been more efficient, or is it because maybe something's not booked correctly? Maybe for some reason in this year's bookkeeping, the fuel costs went somewhere else. Maybe they went accidentally to utilities and gas and electric. So this is the kind of analysis we want to do line by line and make sure that the numbers all make sense. Then once we do that and we've, you know, that's kind of the last double check to make sure that the bookkeeping is accurate and reliable. Then we're ready to do a, a projection. I'm going to show you a very quick pro quo version of a projection the way I like to do it. So we come over here to reports, company and financial. Let's start with a profit and loss standard. And let's say instead of this month to date, which is the default, we'll say it's this fiscal year to date. Now, mind you, we're in a sample company file with a weird fiscal year. It cuts off at October. So reality is, in order to make this look more like what you might see on your books, let's run it for last fiscal year. And under here, uh, over here by columns, we're going to drop this down and choose to total it by month. So I want to look at it for every single month. And then I can export this to Excel. So I'm going to click my export button here. You want to play around with some of your settings. Take out the space between the columns. The default is that this will be checked off. Make sure you uncheck it. Make sure you send the header to the screen so that I know what report I'm looking at once I've run this in Excel. And then QuickBooks will do the export into Excel. And I'm going to get rid of my total line. And since we're in September, we're going to say that September is uh, not complete and therefore it's still going to be projected. Then the next thing I like to do on something like this is shade in the projected uh, or the historical region rather because this is uh, presumably going to be our historical data. And then I'm going to say, all right, I need 9-1 of 2015, 10-1 of 2015, and 11-1 of 2015. And these are going to be the projected months. Now what I'm going to do to start off with is I just want to take all my total lines actually and copy them across. This way I can start to kind of see the layout very clearly and it starts giving me a clear picture of what I need to do 
sort of in between each of these totals. And this helps with the formatting too. So I'm just going to each total and pressing Control C, then Shift on the right arrow to highlight, and you know Enter to paste it across. So Control C, then arrow right once, Shift one two on the right arrow, and then Enter, and it copies all that across. And then over here again with the totals. Now what I'm going to do initially, and really just to sort of fill the space, is I want to take an average. So I type the word average. And Excel recognizes that I'm doing an average formula. And I want to point to the last six months. And what this does is then I'm going to copy this across for the next three months. Now, if you don't know this already, Excel does what's called relative referencing, which means as I copy this across based on the formula that I just wrote, it's always going to take the recent six months. So if I, if I now edit the formula from October, notice it starts in April. The September one started at March. So it copies across and it updates the reference going forward. That way by doing this, I'm taking what's really called a rolling average. Now I can just control C on all three of these lines and control V to paste down these results on every line item in between the totals. This is just to get us a starting point, just to fill in the information. And you're going to find as you go through this, that in many cases, you're going to want to leave the average in there as the very basis for projecting what the amount should be. But in other cases, we're going to go back and revisit each line item. I don't want to get those in there. But we're going to go back and revisit each line item, and we're going to make a decision. Do we want to leave the average, or do we want to be more specific about it? So now coming in, looking at the income, and I'll, I'll, this will be the last thing I'll cover in this free screencast, is let's say we want to be more detailed about this. I have different jobs, and each job might be making use of a different one of these line items or several of these line items. So what I can do, this first tab, I'm going to double click, and this is called, I'll just call this P&L to keep it simple. And let's create another tab here, and we'll just call this income. And what I might want to do is put in the job, put in the line item, you know, the income account and then I'm going to put in my projected months and just to be quick about it I'm just going to copy these over so that I can start projecting for each job and each line item what am I going to do what am I going to do numbers wise so I can put these in here and I can have job one might have some miscellaneous materials right and then maybe job two has all of these line items and also decks and patios. And now I can put in what am I projecting for each of these jobs, each of these line items for the next three months. And I can put in this might be, you know, 250. I'm just going to throw some quick numbers out here. And decks and patios might be a thousand each on this job. Right, this might be a uh, hundred bucks. I'm just randomly throwing numbers in here. I'm not even really thinking about what it might realistically be in, in a real situation. And let's just say this is going to be uh, 2500 a month. Sprinklers and drip systems can be expensive. Patio, let's just say also, uh, let's say this is 3000 a month each for these jobs. Now what I need to do is I need to copy these line items down because as I pointed out, job two is using an item, decks and patios, that job one is also using. And the P&L only shows these line items once in each place. So I want to accumulate them, which means I need to get rid of the duplication here. But I need totals, right? So here are my totals. And really what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to teach you a very advanced Excel formula. It's called sum if. So I say equals sum if, open parentheses. What I'm looking for is the range. So I'm looking some if, if something in here, and I'm going to highlight this whole range where all my income accounts are, right? Then it wants the criteria. Look here. It tells me if that is equal to this, then what I want is the amounts, the total of the amounts here. It's going to sum up any, so it's going to essentially what it's going to do is it's going to look here. It's going to look at what's here and, and look for it in here. And any time that it sees a match, it's going to add the numbers up from here. So miscellaneous material should have actually gotten the 250. I must have done something wrong here. I did. This is actually supposed to point to here. I don't know how that happened, but some if the range is here, 
if that is equal to this, then give me the sum of what's in here. Now I've got my 250. All right. Now the other thing I need to do, and I'm getting a little more advanced here because I had more time than I had counted on having, frankly, is I need to put some dollar signs in here to hold these ranges constant. Remember before when I was doing the averages and I copied across, it did what's called relative referencing. It updated. Well, in certain cases, I don't want it to do that here. In, in fact, I want it to keep this range constant. So I always want it to look in C3 through C8. And this I want to change because I'm going to copy it down and I'm going to want it to pick up the next line item in this section here. But then the sum range should also, the actually the column should change, the rows should not. So I'm going to put dollar signs just in front of the numbers. And I know I'm probably losing some people on this part because I'm going kind of quickly. However, um, you know, just play the recording back. If I've gone too fast, play it back a couple of times. And as always, I'm available for additional training on this. Now, when I copied it over, it didn't pick up the numbers correctly. And I could stop and re-edit the recording and go back and make it look like I did it perfectly. But I want you to see the process that even from somebody like me who does this a lot, and I have a lot of experience with this, it's a building process. So a lot of times I run these formulas initially and I make mistakes. And so, it, you know, and, and so I have to go back and figure out what I did wrong and then fix it. So the question is, why didn't I get a result here? Because I actually don't want to hold, I didn't hold the uh, column constant when I copied this over, but I have to see, for example, here, this went from C3 through C8, which is correct and it looked at D10. So that's what I did wrong. I need to hold the C constant here because column C where this result is needs to be constant before I copy it across. So the dollar sign goes in front of the C and now it picks up everything correctly. Now last piece I come back over to my P&L and I go to my projected miscellaneous materials for September and I say and did I do the columns right here? I did. So I go September miscellaneous materials equals, I come over here to income and I point to miscellaneous materials for September and I hit enter. And at that point I can literally just copy and paste all the way across and down because the range, it mirror images everything that's right here when I come back over here. And that my friends is how you can begin to start projecting, how you can begin to start. That's good English. This is how you can begin to look at your year-end review and to plan your year-end numbers so that then when you're done you can say what's my projected net income for the end of the year I can total this and say well I'm based on this I'm projecting a loss for the year of 103,000 great I'm gonna have a loss to carry forward but there's obviously all kinds of scenarios that could come up and that's why it's important to do this now because you have time to react. You have time to be able to do something different between now and the end of the year to adjust for any problems that you've encountered. Or you might look at this and say, wow, we're doing great. We have another four months or three months left in the year. Let's see what we can do to boost this even further, make it even better. But ultimately the most important thing is that you're doing this regularly, you're reviewing your numbers and you have a sense of where you've been and where you're going. Because if you don't do stuff like this, then it really is like driving without any kind of a road map. You have no idea where you're going or how you're getting there. As always, if you have any questions or would like additional training or information about this or any topic I cover, give me a call right now, 866-945-8070. I'm available for private trainings. I record the live session so that afterwards you can review our session as often as you like afterwards. And because it's private, we can go over things in the very specific context of how you need to learn how to use QuickBooks for your business. So give me a call right now, 866-945-8070, and we can set up an appointment to start you on training trainings with recordings that you can review later. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web. This has been a special presentation brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated on year-end planning for QuickBooks users. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me now 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session so you can review it as often as you like afterwards and maximize your retention of the information that you've learned. Give us a call, 866-945-8070. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.